All right, so not too long ago, I made a video on how to color grade, and a lot of people have seen it, which is great. However, I feel like some of my opinions in there and some of the methods that I've taught are not up to par with what I've learned since then. Now, this whole channel, the point of it is to teach you guys as I learn, which means there could be things that are incorrect on the channel. So let's hop in Premiere, and if you're a beginner, hopefully this helps you at least a little bit. Okay, so we're in Premiere Pro. This is what I do when I color grade everything. I'm just gonna walk you through my process rather than tell you step by step on how to do it, because it will always be a little different, and I think I can show it better by doing that. So the first thing I do is always make sure my Lumetri scopes are here. And if you don't have Lumetri scopes, window, Lumetri scopes are there. And then the same goes for Lumetri color, which is right above it. Make sure you have that on your screen and Lumetri color on your screen. Now that you have that, go to basic correction, select your shot, make sure you have it selected. And I shot in log. You have to like kind of, if you're gonna color grade, generally speaking, you're gonna shoot in a raw log profile, something like that. So in my case, I shot in C log three. We're gonna go ahead and bump the contrast up pretty far, 87, 88. Now, I don't personally use a conversion LUT. You might be like, holy shit, you're not using a conversion LUT, that's fine. Um, I just don't like them and I don't mind doing the work myself to like get it to look rec 709. That being said, the contrast is up. I'm gonna bring up my exposure to like 0.3, 0.4-ish. 0.3 is fine. And my highlights I'm gonna boost up as well. And keep toggling this effects button on and off to see what we started with, see where we are now. All right, so what I need to do is make sure that my shadows are pushed up too because I wanna have a very like bright, airy look to my shot. That's just a preference, but that's what I want. Uh, and then whites, I'm gonna bring up a little bit too. And then to make sure I don't lose detail in the shadows, and I'm gonna lose detail, but make sure the shadows and the blacks feel proper, bring your blacks down a fair bit, a little bit, whatever works for that shot. So this is where we started. This is where we are now. I don't mind this. I feel like my shadows are still a little darker than I want them to be. So I'm gonna boost this up to like 16, 17-ish. It's a little better. And then the last thing I do when I'm in this correction section is, that rhymed, uh, white balance, grab my pick tool. I know that this hat is a pure white hat, so click the hat. Now my white balance is set to the real white balance of the scene. Uh, so we started with this, we're at this, getting there. We still have a lot to go. So what do we do next? Let's close basic correction, go to curves, open that. And if you wanna have a standard, strong, contrasty image, S-curve it, right? Bring this down, bring this up, and then before and after, here we are. I don't want that, so I'm gonna double click and clear that. I'm going to click a point here, drag this a little bit, just a tiny bit, away from the blacks. So we had this before, this is after. Drag this down a little bit, and then bring this up. Now before, we have this. Now after, we have this. Now this still might not be perfect, and it's not. So I'll drag a point in the center down a little bit to get my midtones down a little bit. And then my whites I'll bring up. So we still have some contrast, but it's a little bit more airy in my opinion. This is before, this is after. I'm happy with that. I don't want a super contrasty image. I want a little bit of contrast, but I want to generally speaking have, like I said, an airy look to my shot. So close curves down. And then the last part of my color correction, my lighting correction section, man, I keep rhyming that, is HSL secondary. It's correcting skin tones to whatever those should be. Uh, in my case, I can tell her skin's a bit red, it's leaning towards magenta. I don't want that. So under HSL secondary, drop it down, pick the skin color, let's go ahead, turn the color slash gray on, and you'll notice that it pretty much selects the color I wanted, but there might need to be a few adjustments. So let's go ahead and drag this in the direction it needs to go, do that, and we might have to settle for that. It's not a perfect tool, but it gets most of the job done, and I'd say that this is because this is the highlights here are blown out, and this is pretty accurate to skin. And there's a little bit of red in there, which will be affected even if it wasn't super selected in this region. Let's get to our effect controls. Go down to opacity, make a mask. Now I'm gonna choose this section of her arm. It's a pretty wide open area. Normally you would go like a forehead or something, but as you can tell, this shot's not like a close up where her forehead's in the scene. So this is the best open, you know, color of her skin that I can grab. Make sure you have your mask selected, go to Lumetri scopes. And you'll notice that now we're only seeing the color range on the vector scope wheel of where that color is. And you can tell it's pointing towards the red and the magenta side. We don't want that. We wanna follow this line right here for our skin tones. And if you wanna learn more about color correcting skin tones in more depth, click on the video up here. You can watch that. Um, but we wanna get this line kind of in line with that line. And this is a rule of thumb. It doesn't have to be that way, but it's a general rule of thumb. So I'll show you why it's a rule of thumb. Now that we have that color range selected and we know we do, we wanna go ahead and bring this, by watching our lumetric scope here, we want to bring this towards the green region and the yellows. 
And if you update it and you wait for it, you can tell that it will update and eventually get itself in line with that because you pushed it that way. But when we turn our mask back off, right? Let's toggle the opacity there. It doesn't really look good in terms of her skin tone. It looks green more than it should. So that's what it's telling us to do, but I'm gonna push this back towards the reds a little bit and the oranges more. So this is before, that's after. I think that that is a much better look than what we had. And we use this as a general rule of thumb. So delete that mask, turn your opacity back on and go back to remetry scopes. Now you're back and ready to go for the color grading section of this video. So where do we go from here? We have our color correction. And if you can tell, select your shot. This is where we started. This is where we are. The correction is correct my opinion, but it's correct. Now, I have an adjustment layer down here, and if you don't have one, right click in the open section of your uh, your program project down here, new item, adjustment layer, all your parameters should be the same, press okay, and drag it on to the shot. Now, I'm gonna drag this one up so I can show you something later, but this adjustment layer will now affect everything below it. So that means, we can go ahead and color grade on the adjustment layer here, separately from the correction we just did to this shot down here. So on the adjustment layer, I'm gonna go to creative now, or actually let's start in basic correction. Let's bring our highlights up a little bit. Let's bring our shadows up a little bit. Drop our whites a little tiny bit as well. Bring those blacks back down. So we had this, now we have this. It's so subtle, but it's a little bit of help. Um, and if we toggle this on and off down here, we can see what we have before and what we have now. And you'll notice a lot of change when we get into the color part, which is where we are. Under creative, shadow tint and highlight tint, I want this shot to feel very warm and very summertimey. And I say this because color correction is correcting the color and the lighting and exposure. Color grading is giving that shot character and like telling the story you're trying to tell through the feeling that the color will give. Now, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, when I think of summertime and warm, I think orange, yellow, you know, red, maybe a little bit but more orange and yellow. So I wanna make sure my shot implies that it's more summertime and very sunny. How do we do that? Under shadow and highlight tint, let's go ahead and bring this up to the more yellowed region. And then under shadow tint, do the exact same. And let's go ahead and boost the saturation a little bit, boost the vibrance a little bit. And you'll notice that before you had this, now you have this. Before, after, it's already quite a bit different, really. And it might not feel enough to you and it doesn't feel enough to me. So what do we do now? Close creative. We can go to color wheels and match. And then we do the same thing here, but we can individually select the shadows, midtones, and highlights from the shot rather than just the tint. So under midtones, I'm gonna go ahead and boost this up to more of the orange region. Once again, you can click this on and off. This is where we started. This is where we are now. Shadows, again, I'm gonna bring up towards the yellows, but maybe a bit more towards the yellow green this time. And then I'm gonna boost the shadows color a little bit, less dark, if you would. And toggle this before after and then highlights do i want to bring them to the oranges probably but we're going to try something different i'm going to go towards the blues a bit and i don't really like that you know we can bounce around a little bit with the color here but i think that it's really well suited in this orangey region as well and if i want to i can drag those highlights down or i can boost them up in my case i'm going to leave them roughly in the center they are a little higher than they started but that's fine and then midtones i'm going to bring up too Remember, I want a very bright, sunny scene. And right now, in my opinion, this is doing it quite well. But one more thing, under curves, let's now make our S curve here. And I'm gonna actually make it more subtle than it is. So now if I turn that on and off, this is before, that's after the S curve. And then before the color grade, when I turn this off, this is where we started with the color correction. Now the grade applies this feeling and look to it. What's the point of doing the grade as an adjustment layer instead of just on the shot? Well, assuming that you're making a scene out of these shots, right? Let's say there's multiple of these shots all from the same moment, that's a scene. And that scene, rather than color grading each shot, we want to just apply the same exact, everything the same in terms of color to the grade. Well, the grade is on the adjustment layer. So we can extend that adjustment layer. And let's say this is a different shot, I'll duplicate this. So now this shot and this shot are both being affected by this color grade on the adjustment layer. I'm gonna delete that and then bring this back and cut that. So that's why we do things on an adjustment layer in terms of color grading. But the correction I do to each clip individually because each clip might have a different exposure set. The highlights are more blown out in this shot versus this shot, so we wanna individually adjust those parameters. Now the color grade plays a really big important role. We're not gonna go into color science and theory in this video, but like let's say I were to color grade this 
by bringing all these, let's just say in the blues, this is gonna be a very bad way to show it. But my point is, if I did this, so this feels much more like a wintertime shot than what we just had. So I'm gonna undo all this. We don't want this. And we're back here. So technically speaking, we are done. We've graded it, we've color corrected it. However, in my opinion, and what I do with my own footage that you see in every video, including this one, I like to throw grain on my footage. So I go ahead and I drag this grain I have. Um, I'll put it in the download description for you if you'd like it. Let's go ahead and, now I don't own this grain, so I don't know where I got it from. I'm not claiming to have owned it or made it, but I have it and I will gladly put it out there. I know it was free when I got it. So that's the only reason I'm giving it out. I'm not giving away something for free that was purchased just to make that extra, extra clear. Um, but now under effect controls, if I select this grain layer, you'll notice that you can't see through it. And that's because our blend mode is set to normal. We want to set that to soft light and or overlay. It really depends. I find that overlay gives a stronger grain appearance, much uh, bigger grain, right? So there, there, there we are. This is the grain with overlay. But when we put it on soft light, it's a lot more subtle. It's a little softer, really. Um, and I like that better. I think that looks better. It's not as overwhelming. So there's my green. You know, you can call this done. And I'm gonna copy the opacity effect to that. Go to this shot, click on the green, paste it again, and it will do the same thing to that shot. But there you go, you can call this done. However, in my opinion, I like to step it up one more notch and make the film look really feel filmic, if you would. Uh, so let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna click these, drag them up. I want a gap between the grain. The grain's gonna go on top of everything. And then above the color, I want to go ahead and add in another adjustment layer. So I'm gonna take this adjustment layer back in here and grab a new clean slate, click it. And I wanna make sure I go ahead and go to my effects now. You go under video effects, obsolete, the channel blur, click and drag that onto the shot. And this is gonna add some halation to the highlights. Now it's outside, there's not too many highlights, but a lot of reflections in this board because it's made of a mirror. I like to take my red board in this, I bring that up to about 75. And you might not see the effect apply immediately because it's very intensive on your graphics. However, the one final step to this effect is to go to opacity in the blend mode again and change your blend mode to lighten. Now, when this loads, I'll be able to see the effect. However, right now in this moment, like I said, the screen's gonna freeze because there's a lot of graphics processing happening at the same time. But I know what the effect looks like and I know my general parameters I set, so I'm gonna trust that this 75 is good. The next thing I do is add a luma key and a Gaussian blur to a duplicated version of the base clip. We've talked about this in another video, which you can watch on the screen. That's called Bloom. Now that bloom will give us blooms around the highlights. Now you can see that the halation effect actually just set in and it's really, really intense for this shot. So click your adjustment layer. I'm gonna bring that to like 50, half the quality of that effect. And I think that's gonna be better when this all dies down and it you know renders it out. But let's go back to the bloom. I'm gonna click and duplicate this shot under here. I already made a thing called bloom, but like I said, it's a Luma key and a Gaussian blur. I click and drag that bloom on there. Here we are, the Luma key is set to 88 and 84 for threshold and cutoff. And then the Gaussian board is around 70. I know that I'm gonna want 25-ish for this shot. I don't want it to be overly done. I don't want the effect to be intense. And once again, like I said, the screen is black because it can't render it out fast enough for me to show you in real time. But this is the final shot. So originally we started with this and then we color corrected, we color graded, and then we add all the visual effects, you know, that give it that film look to it. And here is the final product. And I understand that this is going to be an opinionated video, but it is all based off my opinion and my knowledge that I've learned myself individually, not in film school, not professionally, but just what works for me and my process when it comes to color grading client work, my work, YouTube, what, whatever it might be. So I hope you guys understand that and take this with a grain of salt that I could be wrong on some of these things. I try to give you the most accurate information, but this channel is really all about me sharing what I learn and as I learn it with you guys. With that, thanks for watching. I hope you guys get some value out of this at least. I hope this helped and I will see you guys next Wednesday. Uh, every Wednesday, that's the new upload video schedule upload thing. It's on the channel art for a reason. All right, thank you for watching. I will see you guys absolute best. They're great. Cheers. And I'm out. Yeah, I don't know why I thought I can crush that. <laughs>